Hey, this is Joe Van Cleve, and welcome to another episode of the Typewriter Video Series. Today, <laughs> in preparation for the upcoming Typing Assignment Series, I'm going to talk about photography. Yes, and what we're specifically going to be talking about is how to photograph or scan your typewritten one-page masterpieces. Stay tuned. You know, there's a number of us who are bloggers on the internet who use uh, typecast blogging, which is to scan or photograph a typewritten article and then post the image of it to your blog in a large enough resolution, large enough size, so that it's easily readable by an audience. So this uh, typecasting, uh, typewriter blogging, has been going on for almost 10 years or more, I'd say. And there's a, a sizable handful of people, maybe a dozen or so, I don't know what the current count is, of active uh, typecast bloggers, but there's a number of us who continue to do so on a regular basis. But a lot of you guys who are watchers of this series and who might be typewriter aficionados have probably have never done any typecast blogging, and specifically, you've never really photographed uh, perhaps your typewritten material, especially to be able to get it readable, easily legible uh, for the purposes of reading it on online. So we're going to talk today about how to do that, and we're going to use two methods. Uh, the first method is going to be using a flatbed scanner. Now, the flatbed scanner is your pretty much your ideal way of capturing an image of a typewritten sheet because it's just ideal for paper documents. And it does a great job in the software. For instance, my Epson software, I'm using just the Epson scan software, but it's plenty uh, adequate for getting high-quality scans. And that's my de facto normal method for uh, getting images of my typecasts. However, when I have been out on the road on vacation or whatever, and I'm wanting to typecast blog on the road, I have to resort to using other means. Since I'm not going to carry a computer and a flatbed scanner with me on the road, I have to resort to a, a mobile uh, camera device. Now, I have used a, a DSLR style camera like this Lumix uh, Micro Four Thirds that we're shooting video with, but it's a lot more convenient to use a cell phone or a mobile device. I'm using my little iPod Touch Generation 3. This was um, the most current iPod Touch up until last fall, fall of 2016 when it got updated again, but the camera on this device is essentially like I would say probably a 5 series iPhone in terms of quality, so it's adequate. And oh, by the way, this is what I edit all my videos on, so don't laugh too badly. But I'm going to show you how to do uh, scanner type uh, scanning of an image of a typewritten sheet, and then we're going to photograph using just some uh, regular lights and a little mobile device and show you how we can edit and tweak that photograph to get it better for uploading. Stay tuned. So first, let's talk about scanning an image with a, with a flatbed scanner. Um, the resolution that you need on this is probably nothing better than about 600 dots per inch. That's what I use. You don't need 3,000 dots per inch film kind of resolution for a typewritten sheet. You just need just enough resolution to be able to clearly make out the letters and maybe the texture of the paper. So um, let's go to that right now. Okay, I'm going to place my... Uh, typecast to be scanned in the glass and centered up on the top and right edges like that. Now I'm using an older Epson scanning software. It's an old uh, Epson 2480 scanner. So I set the software to the professional mode and I use 24-bit color and I typically scan at about 600 dots per inch. Okay, now I'm going to set the cropping mode and I like to set the top edge here just above my title, if you want the title in your picture. I set the left and right boundary, so I set the left boundary so it has a couple characters width uh, of margin here. Um, same thing on the bottom if you want a signature line, and then on the right side, since typically the uh, margins are not justified on the right side, I pick whatever is the longest line and go a couple characters beyond it. So that's my cropping right there, and now I'm going to go over to this, uh, the adjustment, the histogram adjustment, and we need to get our light and dark points set first. Okay, so when I'm setting the light and dark points uh, of my scan, I will uh, take the light point here and drag it up to the top of the histogram envelope, 
and the dark point, of course, I set it right to the bottom. And then the midpoint, I like to set it on this particular scanner, one about 1.28 to 1.3 gives me a good tonal range that I can work with. And then as we zoom out a little bit, then I'm just going to go ahead and hit close and that will save those settings. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit scan and it will ask me for where I am going to put this file at. And I'm going to tell it where to save it at and it will go ahead and scan it. After scanning, I'm going to want to open up the file in my photo editing software and do a little adjustments to it. So I've opened up the scan of the image uh, in my photo editing software and I'm going to increase the contrast um, on this. I put it up to about a 10 on this scale and if you notice here, this is just definitely easier to read. The letters are crisper and uh, better contrast, and that helps to make it more legible when someone else is trying to read it online. Okay, next I'm going to resize the horizontal width, and I usually like to do it about um, 10 inches by 100 pixels per inch, so that's a thousand pixels wide on the narrow side. And of course, I will constrain proportions so that it'll maintain the same aspect ratio. But I'm going to have it a thousand pixels wide. That should give you sufficient resolution to read it online. And of course, once you have saved the final version of your uh, scanned image at the uh, thousand pixel wide on the narrow side, and uh, you have it, uh, of course, the contrast and brightness adjusted to however you like it, so it's very clear and easy to read. You're going to want to upload that image to your photo hosting website and make sure that the photo is public so that I can view it. And you'll need to capture the URL of that image and post it to my blogger article in the comments section with your name. Now let's cover how to do this with a mobile device handheld. So now we're going to talk about how to take photographs of your typewritten sheet using a mobile device, a cell phone, tablet phone. In this case, this is an iPod Touch. So it's kind of like an older, maybe 5 series iPhone in terms of camera quality. And you don't really need any kind of a mount like this because you're going to have to handhold it over your piece of paper. What you really need is a light, is two light sources coming from opposite directions, kind of like 45 degrees down onto your tabletop. And that's kind of what I have here with my little studio table situation. So uh, you can use um, two table lamps, uh, two desk lamps. The color temperature of the light bulbs is not that important because I, you know, realistically, you could just turn the file into a black and white image uh, if the colors were weird anyways. The, the important thing when you're doing this is you want to get even illumination across the paper and you want to get a good exposure and good focus and good framing so that the image is nice and sharp and clear, easy to read. Okay, so I'm going to kind of hand hold this and I will c uh, use the camera in this here and I'll talk through it as we take the picture. Okay, here is my tabletop surface. I have one light here on one side, one light on the other side. They're both sort of pointing down. I haven't really adjusted them. They're sort of currently adjusted for the way I like to do my video illumination. But I'm going to center the camera directly over the piece of paper so that the left and right sides are parallel to each other. In other words, you don't want them keystoned like this where they're converging or keystone like that. You want it to be so they're parallel to each other as much as you can get. And the same thing with the uh, long edges. You don't want them to be like that or like that kind of keystoning. So, and this isn't super crucial. The whole idea is just to make it readable. Now I'm going to move in slowly and adjust my position so I don't have any keystoning. Now I'm going to tap on the paper for focus and that will be where I take my photograph. Now you don't absolutely need key lime pie and hot tea to do this editing of your photograph but I'm not going to argue if you want to go ahead and do it that's fine with me. 
Okay, I'm going to use the photo editing feature built into iOS on my iPod Touch just to show you how I would uh, edit this photo uh, in a simple editor. And so this is the photo. Of course, the orientation sensor on the mobile device is sensed it is upside down, but we can correct for that. So there's this little bar graph control knob symbol. And so what I want to do first of all is reorient the image upright. So I'm going to click on this orientation button and right here this, this, so now it's right side up. Now if you want to maintain the aspect ratio of the image you can crop it down by the corner uh, icons otherwise you want to pull it in manually on the sides and just a simple cropping like that and we'll call that good. If you wanted to rotate it, you could rotate it with this control. So we'll call that uh, OK. And now we're going to get this little dial symbol, like a clock face. Go to the light, the pull down icon. I'd like to start with brilliance. And I'm going to increase the brilliance all the way. Then I'm going to go back and choose contrast. I'm going to increase the contrast. And at this point, if you had any unevenness of illumination between one side of the paper and the other, it would definitely show up because one side would be darker than the other, but it's pretty close right here. Now I'm going to increase the brightness just slightly to get rid of some of that shadowness in the paper. And I'm going to just call that good. I'll hit done. And so now when we look at the image, let's zoom in to those letters. And they are pretty darn readable, all the way from the upper left corner, all the way down to the lower right corner. It's nicely contrasty letters, dark, rich, contrasty letters between the paper white and the dark ink. And I like to maintain just a little bit of paper texture uh, on my scan, but that's just my own personal taste. So from here, I'm going to take this image and I'm going to export it, this little export icon right here. I'm going to export it to, and I would usually send it to my Flickr account, but you could send it to Facebook or well, any other photo edit, photo sharing uh, website that you would like to use. And make sure that the image is public the, so that, that I can see it and uh, get a shot of it. So, in summary, the most important thing about photographing um, a typewritten sheet by hand is making sure that both sides of the paper are evenly illuminated. You don't want, let me turn off this light here on this side, you don't want it illuminated like one side bright and one side dark. And neither do you want it to be keystoned, crooked this way or this way. You want it to be framed up nice and square, as I indicated earlier, so that the image is very easily readable. And then once it's on your website and you have given me the link to the image in the article, in the blog article that I'll be posting, um, maybe you should think about starting your own blog. Go to Blogger or WordPress or one of those websites and just start a blog and start throwing those typewriter images, typewritten images on your blog. Maybe include uh, in the comments below the image, include what uh, typewriter you used. And I would also encourage you for this uh, typing assignment series that I would encourage you to, when you leave your, your name and the URL to the image, also leave some information about the typewriter itself so I can talk about that too. Well, good luck and I hope next week that I will start for, sh for reals, as we say around here, for reals in this uh, typing assignment series. So stay tuned for next Monday. We should be starting up with this and uh, happy typing, happy writing. Until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve. You have yourselves a great day.